and uh, we start with uh, doing an exercise. And in particular, remember the first lecture we were talking about a uh, class stack to implement a very simple stack. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we are going to work again on this uh, stack class. And in particular, we are going to see, uh, for example, how to implement uh, how to implement a, a way to copy a stack. So the idea is suppose that you have a stack and uh, you fill it with uh, things and then after a while you want to uh, copy it. Okay. So here for example, uh, okay this was the sample we did the last time and uh, we were trying to catch errors. Uh, and today instead we are going to uh, do something a little bit different. So for example, suppose we are going to, to use this. We are going to put 10 elements in the stack. I'm going to put 10 elements in the stack and then I want to create another stack as a copy of the first one. And suppose also I'm going to write a function for printing all the elements of the stack. So let's define a print here. So we can look at the content and I'm going to implement this print in the CPP file. So what we have is S is the, uh, let's say, the, the element, the first free element in the stack. This prints position and how much is it? Okay. And I'm going to write also. So it first prints uh, how many elements in the stack, and then it prints on every single line. Uh, the content of this stack. Okay. I'm going to write also a little uh, make file for uh, uh, simplifying the compilation. So here I have a little make file. Uh, I'm going to specify the flags for the C++, the flags for the linker. I don't have a specific flag for the linker, the CPP uh, command, and the linker command. These are the suffixes .o and .cpp. The structure is one of the xx I was going to compile, and the other one is going to be called stack main. Okay, and let's do. Uh, sorry. So here I uh, list the sources 
for uh, the stack. And I'm going to see that uh, the uh, objects are just uh, the same thing, but with .o instead of .cpp. I'm going to compile everything with this. And I'm going to link everything by using sorry. I'm going to use uh, to link everything by using this. <coughs> okay. So basically, the idea is that this is the command for linking. Okay? This is the command for compiling. And here I'm just listing uh, all the sources for the stack and uh, uh, all the sources for the destructor. And these are the two things I'm going to compile. So I do make, and this will try to compile the stack. I have an error in stack, basically C out has not been declared because I forgot to, to specify the standard uh, library. So I'm going to change that, of course. So this C out cannot be found because I forgot to specify. Oh no, it's here. So I forgot to include the IO stream. Okay, so now it should be okay because see how it is defined in this either file. Uh, I made an error probably because uh, let's see what I did as an error in the make file. Oh, yes, I forgot, sorry. Okay, now it compiles and I execute with stack main and I have immediately a core dump because I made some error. And let's see what is the error. And the error is probably in this uh, copy constructor. Can you imagine what is going on here? So if I don't do the do copy constructor, so if I do this, I see S printed and nothing bad happens. Everything is OK. See? As soon as I activate this, I have a big error. No, sorry, I need to compile. <laughs> OK, so it looks like the problem is the fact that I'm uh, using the uh, copy constructor. And let's see what it happens. So I run the program. The first stack has been printed. And then it says, error in stack main, double free or corruption. That's the backtrace. And this is the memory mode. Very difficult to understand. So anybody has any idea? So clearly, the problem is here. And as you can see, I don't specify any copy constructor. So this means that when I don't specify any copy constructor, then the default one is going to be called. And what's the default one doing? The default one is doing a bitwise copy. So it's copying all the elements bit by bit. And what are the elements inside stack? There is a pointer. Mm -hmm. There is a pointer and two integers. Mm -hmm. So it's copying the pointer and it's copying the integers. 
Now, this means that the first constructor, the one of S, is actually creating the memory. The copy constructor is just copying the pointer, but not the memory. Then the destructor of S will delete the memory. And the second destructor of S2 will also try to delete the same memory. So this is a double free. So I'm freeing the same memory twice. And of course, that's a memory corruption. So the problem here is that the copy is not correct because I'm not copying the stack. I'm just copying the pointer. This is called a shallow copy because I'm not copying the object with all its content, but I'm just copying the external shell, the, the, the pointer. If I want to copy the object, what I have to do is to implement what is called a deep copy. And in particular, I have to write, I'm forced to write a copy constructor. So this is one example of why the copy constructor is needed. To change the standard behavior, which is a shallow copy, and to implement the deep copy. So copying all the elements, including the memory pointed by the pointers. So this is called a, a deep copy. So let's write this. So I want to copy a stack. So what I have to do is to initialize the array by passing what? other max sites. Sorry, I cannot use S because S is using as a, as a local variable. So I'm going to use other. So array is initialized to new memory. And the size of this memory must be the same as the size of the other memory. OK? Then M size must be equal to the other M size. And S I initialize for the moment to 0. The second thing I have to do is to copy all the elements. So for example, I can write a, a four cycle. Actually, I can do that directly here. This will copy all the elements. And then I just initialize this. Of course, I can also initialize here. So yes. Let's do like this. OK, so allocating new memory, copying uh, all the other elements, and then copy all the memory. OK, so now hopefully it will work. I forgot to specify int here. Mm, it's called the uh, M side, right? Yeah. And in the complete structure. Oh yes, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then I run, and everything goes okay. 
So no more memory corruption anywhere. Okay, so deep copy instead of shallow copy. Uh, another thing we would like to do is, uh, for example, uh, to um, um, access uh, any element inside the array by using the operator with the square parentheses. Let's, uh, let's see how to write that. So, of course, this will return an int. And of course, it will take an integer as an index. Okay? And of course, this integer has to be proper. So this may uh, throw an exception. So if i is less than 0, or i is greater than m sides, then true. OK? And otherwise, I return OK? And so we are going to change the way we write this uh, print um, by using, uh, OK, no. So for a moment, let's leave it like it is. OK? So in the main, for example, we may want to see out the I don't know, third element. Okay, remember we count from zero, so the third element is the one with index two. Okay, compilation, and then third element. Okay. So this is about uh, the stack. Mm, what else? Uh, OK, let's suppose now that uh, we want to have uh, a stack of uh, different kind of elements. So not only integers, but something a little bit different. And so we are going to use uh, one specific uh, uh, class and uh, use a stack of that class, OK? And let's see what this uh, means for us. Excuse me. Yeah? A question. Uh, why to check if uh, the index is uh, um, more than uh, the max size instead of the actual size? Oh, yes, you are right. I mean, this is uh, something. This is just a design decision, so yes. Yes. Otherwise, we'll just uh, so max size, of course, is because uh, we don't want to cause uh, memory corruption. But of course, that should be like that. Oh, I forgot to say that in C++ you can use uh, this kind of keyword for uh, boolean operators, or and and so on. Okay. So it's actually a little bit easier to read. The or is uh, operator is I can redefine it. No, so you cannot redefine the operators for primitive types. Okay. For example, you cannot redefine the sum of integers. Okay? Uh, and or, if I remember well, is only for booleans and is n cannot be used for uh, uh, non booleans. Instead, you can redefine the, 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 the old operator, so the this one. Yeah, okay. So you can write this. Okay. Oh, by the way, so uh, I just forgot. So uh, suppose instead that uh, we want to eliminate, so I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Suppose that uh, instead of specifying uh, uh, a max size in the constructor, 
we want to the um, array to be uh, dynamically resized every time I push a new element and there is no space. So this max size now becomes uh, uh, a dynamic uh, variable, not a constant, and uh, we want to modify it uh, as soon as so basically the stack should be able to enlarge itself when we do push. Okay, so let's try to modify it this way. So first of all, we eliminate the need for specifying a parameter here. Okay, and uh, you suppose that initially we m sides will be equal to two, so only two elements. So we eliminate this, and m sides is initialized to two, and initially the array is just two elements. Okay. The rest remains the same. What we have to do is to modify this push. Okay? So if array is less than m size, so if s is less than m size, we just do the same. Otherwise, instead of throwing here, we have to enlarge. Okay? So to enlarge, we will do like this. First, I define uh, another array. Which is going to take double the size of the previous one. Then I'm going to uh, then I'm going to copy everything. to delete the old array and then the new array the, the array takes the address stored in new array okay and of course I have to modify f and size And now I can insert. So actually, I'm going to do this uh, before. So I'm going to change this radically. After this code, the array has been enlarged, and so I can finally insert. So let's analyze again. If s is equal to m sides, it means the array is full. So I create new memory. I copy all the elements from the old array to the new array. I delete the old array. I just assign the pointer, I double the sides, and then I can finally uh, do the assignment. Okay? So this should work fine, and uh, let's see if uh, our previous uh, main works well. So I don't specify anything anymore here, yeah? and uh, and this should work. Yeah. 
uh, I forget. Uh, I wrote in a in a wrong way because I never remember how to write it. Oh, it's okay. So basically, I forgot. Never remember this syntax. I always need to to look on the internet for it. Uh, okay, now it works. Okay, so it's just the same output as before, but we don't need to specify the size because the size is enlarged automatically. Okay. Uh, we can uh, make something a little bit better here, and in particular, for example, instead of writing this cycle, we can use uh, some of the standard template library algorithms. Let's see how to do that. Uh, here is not really necessary, uh, but in general, it's much better to use uh, standard template algorithms for everything because they are more uh, general and m easier to to generalize. So copy is uh, what. Uh, Okay, so this is a site, C++ reference, C++.com, that uh, provides you reference with many of the uh, C++ standard template library. And uh, in this uh, either file, algorithm, you will find a lot of very simple functions that can help you in doing uh, simple things. One of these is copy. And the nice thing about copy is it doesn't work only on uh, uh, Arrays, but works on any kind of uh, sequence, any kind of uh, container. So, for example, all containers of the standard template library uh, work with copy, okay? Because it uses the template mechanism. Uh, so, basically, what we have to specify is uh, the where to start, where to finish, and uh, the first element in which to copy. So basically, it's easier to write than to uh, to explain. Here, we start from other array. Okay, we finish at other array plus s, and we copy into array. Okay. But this is exactly the same thing as before, but written using uh, the copy uh, standard template library function. And again, this works on any kind of things. So in the future, if uh, instead of using uh, an array, you want to use, uh, for example, a vector, then this is going to work. And uh, of course, we can do the same here. Let's try if this is true. Yes, I mean, probably. <laughs> we didn't do the other, other try, but uh, uh, we are pretty sure that uh, it should work. Okay, so copy, it's the standard template library algorithm for copying uh, things. Okay. Uh, we will come back to this implementation much later, and uh, for integer, it's it's okay. I mean, this uh, algorithm works quite fine. Uh, but when we are going to move uh, to more complicated uh, implementation by using templates, you will see that there are a lot of uh, uh, very subtle problems can, can arise in this kind of code, and so actually we are going to use a completely different approach to implement a stack. Okay, so before concluding this lecture, 
we just go back to our uh, uh, slides and we talk a little bit about type conversion. Uh, so, uh, type conversion means we have one thing of one type and we want to transform into a different object of another type. Okay? And um, this conversion can be done in many different ways. And one way of doing that is by using a constructor. So basically, when you define a constructor that takes one single argument, and this single argument is an object or a constant reference to another type, that constructor can be used by a compiler for performing an automatic type conversion. For example, suppose you have class 1, and this class 1 uh, contains nothing, it's just for as an example. And then you have class 2, which takes in the constructor a uh, reference to an object of type const1. And then suppose you have a function which takes as an argument an object of type 2. Be careful, an object, not a reference, an object. Okay? Then in the main, you have an object of type 1, and you call f1. <coughs> well, what the compiler is going to do now is looking for a function f which takes 1. Doesn't find it. It finds instead a function f which takes a 2. So now the compiler tries to automatically convert 1 into 2. And uh, it finds this constructor and says, oh, I have a way to obtain a 2 from 1. So I'm going to do that. It builds a temporary object of type 2 by passing 1 and passes this temporary object to f. So this is how to do automatic conversion. Okay? Let's make another example. Suppose we have a class AA which has a constructor which takes an integer. Okay, very simple and also very common. And suppose we have a function which takes an object of type AA by copy. Then in the main you call a far five. Well, what happens is that there is no function which takes an integer as an argument, but you have a function which takes this class as an argument. So the compiler takes this 5, converts that into an object of type AA, a temporary object. This temporary object is passed to this function and copied into X, and then X is printed. And so if you actually compile and execute this code, what you see is C out 5 on the screen. Uh, this can be some trouble, because sometimes it's uh, just an error. Sometimes you want a, an object of class AA, not just an automatic conversion. Uh, but uh, the user just writes something like this, because it's uh, bad typing, I don't know, whatever. And uh, the compiler doesn't complain. It actually does an automatic conversion, and you are in trouble, because you didn't want that. Uh, so to prevent this kind of implicit conversion, we can use uh, the keyword explicit. So basically, in front of the constructor, you write explicit. And this means that the compiler is not allowed to implicitly convert 5 into an um, uh, object of type AA. Okay? That's not allowed. So for example, in the main now, if you call fun of 5, this will give you an error. However, if you call fun AA5, then this is okay, because you explicitly converted the 5 into AA. Okay? Of course, the first one is probably an error. The second one is not an error. You want to do that. So it's okay. Uh, well, question. yeah. What if we also add a, a constructor of A which takes a float? 
we have two constructors, one which takes an int and one which takes a float. Yeah. What do we call fun5? Is it legal? Yes, it's legal and uh, it uses the integer because it's the closest one. If you want to call the other one, you have to specify that 5 is a float. So you either write 5f or you write 5.0. Okay. But never do that. <laughs> never try the do function which just differs uh, between int and float. Okay? Okay. Uh, Okay, so we have seen time conversion using that. And another, uh, of course, if a fun takes a constant reference, then of course there is no way to convert. I mean, this is only works if it's actually asking for an object. Hmm? Uh, a very special kind of operator is the uh, uh, an operator uh, which has the same name of the type on which you want to convert. So suppose you want to convert 4 into 3. And 3 has uh, uh, a constructor which takes two arguments. Okay? And uh, f you want to convert another class, 4 into 3, but you cannot modify 3. So you cannot write a constructor in 3 that takes uh, a a constant reference to 4. Okay? So how can you do? Well, what you can do is to write one very specific type of operator into 4, which has the same name as the class to which you want to convert. So here you will write operator 3 const return 3x. Okay? Which is, x is an integer, of course. So now you have a function g, which takes a tree, and in the main you have a, an object of type 4, and you pass 4 to g, and everything goes OK. Why? Because this 4 is converted into 3 by using this strange operator. Okay. And so this is the second way of converting it. You will probably not need too much to use these kind of things, but it's just to let you know, in case you find uh, in some uh, strange code, that you also have this kind of operator. And also remember this explicit, because it can save you from some very stupid error on the code, because catching this kind of errors is very difficult. So if you remember, please use explicit when you have uh, a uh, constructor which takes just an integer or a very, let's, let's say, basic uh, kind of uh, type of, uh, of data. OK. So this is uh, everything for today. So let's have uh, just a quick look at what we are going to study next uh, week. So next week, uh, we will uh, continue with some of the basic things. In particular, I'm going to discuss uh, inheritance. Um, so we are going to see uh, the basics of inheritance and uh, virtual function, virtual destruction, pure virtual function, and things like that, and how this interacts with all that we have seen today. So basically, for example, copying and uh, converting and, and conversion and things like that. Okay? <coughs> also, next week, uh, probably, I don't know exactly when, I'm going to give you the first assignment. So next week, expect the first one. So the lecture is going to be on Wednesday, right? Yes. Wednesday at 11. OK, that's it for today. Thank you. If you have any other question. Excuse me. Yep. In the last slide that you present, yes. in the constructor of three, what is uh, the, next par uh, arg the second argument, int equal to 0? OK. The constructor of 3 is taking in two arguments. 
but both of them are default. Yeah, but there is int equal to zero. I mean, not no any name to the end. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the last word. Yes. Uh, I mean, there is just int without any name to the variable equal to zero. Is it correct, or maybe there is a mistake? Uh, yes, yeah, there is a mistake, probably, yes. Sorry, okay. this is just a typo in my slides. Okay. Thank you for highlighting it. So this should be, I don't know, J or something like that, okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So see you on next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.